Well, I'm not one to typically discuss Twitter or cable news drama, but in this case, I have to say, um, the uh, feud between Tucker Carlson and the U.S. military has gotten very interesting, and I think it's going in a very positive direction. Um, I don't really care about the drama itself so much uh, as I do the implications of it, but just to summarize for those of you who have not heard, it's a very stupid story. Um, essentially, Tucker did some kind of segment on his show where he was talking about how, you know, the military is being feminized and we've got all these, you know, pregnant women in combat or I don't know what his exact words were, but uh, he triggered all of the pro-war feminists, uh, you know, all of your, I guess, uh, your suburban liberal white women types, uh, as well as their simps at the Pentagon. The unironic draft our daughters kind of crowd, the you know the kinds of people who want to see um, uh, female boots on the ground in Afghanistan, like that to them is progress. The people who uh, would unironically retweet that old meme that they might you know misconstrue as as serious, um, where you have these people in the Middle East. Uh, you know, ducking and covering while there's bombs dropping out of the sky, and and somebody says to the to the guy next to him, "Hey, don't worry. I hear that the next bombs are going to be dropped by a woman of color." <laughs> so I think you know the kind of people I'm talking about. They're very very upset that Tucker uh, would question uh, women in the military or their role or the feminization of the military um, and uh, the general wokeness of the Pentagon. Well, I'm very happy that he did because. Uh, the Pentagon's response through various Twitter accounts um, has really revealed to uh, a lot of Americans, and I hope that this spat continues so that more and more people see this, uh, that the Pentagon is not the bastion of, of masculinity and Americanism uh, that, you know, typical right-wingers in America um, have always perceived it as. I mean, the military's, you know, always been the most popular branch of, uh, or I shouldn't say branch, the most popular part of the federal government. Uh, it's the most well-respected, and it's the one that right-wingers, you know, even if they think all the other, um, uh, you know, in their campaign speeches, for example, Republicans always talk about how inefficient every department of the federal government is and how they just screw everything up and they never do anything right. But then when you get to the military they, and the Pentagon, they just extol their virtues and talk, you know, and for some reason the Pentagon, they consider to be completely different. Now, in reality, the Pentagon is not different. The Pentagon is just like all these other uh, terrible government agencies. They're just as woke. Uh, they're just as inefficient. Um, but they also happen to murder a lot more people. And so I'm very happy to see that the overwhelming response on Twitter has been negative uh, as far as right-wingers are concerned um, towards the Pentagon. And they definitely feel like, you know, uh, Tucker is winning this battle. <laughs> And not because I care about the specific issue of feminization in the military. I mean, well, Tucker's solution is not something that, you know, I necessarily care about. You know, Tucker, I think, wants the military to be more manly and masculine and stuff. Um, I just want the military to be discredited and to go away because they've done a terrible job since World War II. Uh, you know, since the creation of the Department of Defense and the Pentagon, um, it's been um, hellacious. It's been horrible. Um, they don't protect Americans. They have their own interests that they're looking to serve. Uh, they work in partnership with the military-industrial complex. There's a revolving door between Pentagon leaders and private sector military-industrial complex leaders. Um, I mean, uh, the the current Secretary of Defense was on the board of Raytheon. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's not it's not a secret. It's not some um, hidden conspiracy. It's the way they operate. Uh, it's just reality. Uh, these are bad people. And the Pentagon, for decades, has been able to hide behind, I guess, the veneer of that friendly soldier, uh, you know, that 18-year-old kid you know from down the block who decided to join the army so he could defend the flag and our freedoms, and, and you always thank him for his service. Those are the – that image um, – was shattered for a lot of people yesterday. Now, not enough people, because it was just on Twitter, and there's not that many people on Twitter. It doesn't represent a majority of the country, but if this sort of sentiment grows, um, just like with the universities, people on the right probably used to respect uh, college professors, believe it or not. They probably thought sending your kids to college was a good idea. A lot of them still do, as hard as that is to believe, um, because it's that hard to break that. But uh, um, if the military starts going down this road, that the colleges are of being woke, um, 
then in due time, uh, your average right winger will regard the Pentagon the same day they do the same way they do uh, their local public university and Hollywood. And if we get to that point, and they really do see the Pentagon in that light, um, if they just do see um, the Pentagon as yet another culture war enemy, well then the talk of you know, really, really strip, you know, bringing the troops home, getting rid of all these wars, um, tearing down the military industrial complex. This will become a rallying cry on the right, <laughs> as hard as that is to put, would have been to believe a few years ago. Um, but, you know, that is the power of these culture war issues. And um, as much as I don't like the culture war stuff, um, it's not something it's, I don't like to make that the focus of my channel. There's plenty of people who do that, and I don't think it's the most important issues. You have to understand that from a uh, from a Machiavellian standpoint, these are the issues you have to use to actually advance the more um, the more serious issues. Because the, the tough part is more serious issues are kind of wonkish. They're hard to explain to people in, in you know in, in short stuff. A lot most people are very busy in their lives. They don't have time to worry about. Um, uh, how taxes work other than doing their own taxes uh they don't have to you know but i mean in principle like how tax codes should be written should we have taxes at all that sort of thing monetary theory these are things that the average person will never think about because they don't have time they're complicated matters and so the cultural issues are ways of distill of distilling um all of this all of these ideas into stuff that people can understand at a very basic and visceral level and so if you can get in tune with the cultural zeitgeist um, and try and tie um, uh, your ideas uh, to one side or the other. So, for example, tie the anti-war movement to the anti-woke movement um, in this case because the military is becoming woke. Um, people who don't like wokeness then will not like the military. And so it's a great opportunity to try and you know, move against the military. Because it's all about changing people's perception of these institutions. Once the once the Pentagon is perceived to be a joke um, by somebody, um, it's no longer so easy for them to just say, "Well, I'm going to trust the generals." And if the generals say we need to stick in Afghanistan, well, then we must need to stick in Afghanistan. You don't want those terrorists coming home to attack us, do you? Um, but you know, if you point to that person and say, "Oh, you mean the same general who wants to um, draft pregnant women and have them serve on the front lines?" Um, the, the, the people who are, um, you know, tweeting all day about how, uh, about their, uh, their tranny pride stuff. Uh, you know, the kind of person who's super deferential to the military and to authority is not going to respect their authority if they don't act like authority figures. If they act like weak and feeble-minded um, uh, snowflakes, to, to borrow a boomer word, then the military is not going to command the respect of much of the public. Um, you know, the core base of the military's support is going to abandon them, and all they're going to be left with is the more, is the uh, relatively more tepid support of your suburban liberal class. You know, I'd imagine in a lot of rural parts of America where, um, uh, you know, men uh, who graduate, uh, you know, from college, or not college, from high school uh, at 18 and don't really have much to do because there's not a whole lot of opportunity in their community, and they join the military, and there's, you have a high percentage of enlistment. Um, amongst the population and veterans and things like that because of this, um, it would probably still at this point uh, be hard to run as an anti-war Republican so much. Um, even though there are ways of couching it in, you know, an the anti-war stuff in terms of, hey, I don't want the troops to die in, in stupid wars, um, you can only go so far. Um, you have to be very careful not to offend the institution of the military. But if the Pentagon is perceived to be the cultural enemy of rural America, um, of these very men, uh, who young men who are enlisting, and these older men who were, um, you know, enlisted at some point, then it becomes much more easier to attack the Pentagon. Um, you they'll understand because they also you know regard the Pentagon as a bad thing for cultural reasons. They will understand that when you're attacking the Pentagon, you're not attacking them. You're not attacking the troops. You're attacking uh, the leadership, you're attacking the bureaucrats, and you're attacking uh, the left, primarily. So I, I'd say that about sums up my thoughts on the, on what, on the surface is a, is a very stupid scandal, but, you know, there's, there's a silver lining that I try and find with these stories.